Hello, 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 hello. What is up, people? Tis I, Mr. Ben Bailey. I coming at you live from Vix Bar here at Triple B Studios in my own basement. What's happening? It's Sunday night. And it's time to launch this thing. Red is first in. What's up, Red? Elizabeth Fahey, Fancy Pants, MYC43, Destruction, Marta Weller, Kevin's Bacon Bits, Con Con, Five Minutes to Wapner. I'm your Judge Wapner, that's fantastic. Movie quote right out of the gate. I'm gonna play the graphic for you as soon as this one's over. Fahey, Weller, Bacon Bits, Weller, Destruction, Spinal Abipida. Con Con, Fahey, Weller, Destruction. It's like I'm calling a race. Y'all are the horses, get it? There's Mark G, there's MB New. What's up, MB New? Oh! Blowing it up, I forgot it was coming. It surprised me. Uh, it's Monday for me here, two, Monday for me here, 2 a.m. says Deathstruction. Where are you? Deathstructiveness. Must be across the pond, eh, if you're ahead of us by that much. What's up, everybody? It's Sunday night, and here I am. There's Angela O. I'm just scrolling through. I want to say hello. There's Kimon. Kimon, Kimon, Kimon. What is happening? Uh, who is that? Wait, wait. Monorail 425. Go ODU. Yeah. Tim Yak. Woo, woo. What's up, Tim Yak? Roller skater, Texas girl. Love your stand-up and podcast. Ben, thanks for the hard belly laughing. Hey, you're welcome, roller skater Texas girl. I'm coming to Texas in not that long. I'm going to be in Houston. I'm going to be in Austin. What's up, Just Zilla? Just Zilla, is that all you are? Just plain old Zilla? Nothing ahead of time. You're not God. You're just Zilla. I get it. What's up, you guys? There's Tim Silva. How are you doing, Ben? Good to see you. I am doing well. Thank you, Tim. Doing well. Doing well. I'm going to play this for the movie quote that was thrown out already by someone else. And I'm going to throw another one in there. Looking good, Lewis. Feeling good. That's your first one for today. Uh, and there's Kowalski. What's up, Kowalski? Just in time for a movie quote. And one of these, because I never want to keep you waiting too long. Rob Burley, what's up? It's time for all you new peoples uh, to experience your first cash cab drive-by. Welcome to the big new show and the first cash cab drive-by of this episode number 42. If you can't read what's on the screen, I'll tell you, it's time for you to drink your drink. Be it beer, be it water, be it whiskey, be it wine. You take a sip of yours and I'll take a sip of mine. <laughs> Nice. Cheers, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Filezilla? What's Filezilla? There's Robbie Osborne. I've had a really busy spring break. What are you doing this spring break, Robbie Osborne? Let us know. Give us some details. Cheers, y'all. Kowalski left the show early, left home early so he could catch the show before work. Fantastical. Love it. There's Patricia Bradshaw. What is happening? I think I owe you guys a blow up. But let me scroll back here. It's from Mark G. And he says, cheers. Whoa. Oh, ho, ho. Booyah. That's a $5 tip right out of the gate, folks. Hope you had a good week, everybody. Um, I did. Had a pretty good week. Tim Silva says, my son and I love your videos. Fantastic. Thanks, man. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for watching. Thanks for enjoying. So glad you like it. Thanks for tuning in to tonight's live streaming program, which is called The Big New Show with me, Ben Bailey. Uh, I don't know why I'm speaking in that <laughs> accent. No Jeff Watkins, good guess, not Hitchhiker's Guide. Ah, con, con, got it. Dan Aykroyd, Lewis, Trading Places. 
Cheers, Tim Silva. Cheers to all you guys. It's been a good week, man. I've, I, I just, it's like, it seems like it's never going to come when the, when the daylight savings time comes and it's like, it's been getting dark, you know, two minutes later or a minute and a half later every day for months. <laughs> and you're like, this is never going to get there, man. And then it does. And it flips. And for two days, you're like, oh, my God, what time is it? What day is it? And then it's like, oh, hey, it's 7.15 or 7.30, and it's still it's still light out. It's delightful. It's still lightful. I really like it. I really do enjoy this part of the year. But then, like, if you have a house and a yard, how many of you guys have homes and yards out there? Uh, big, small, whatever. There's maintenance that needs to be done, right? Then it's like, oh, my God, we need to... We need to get on this. We miss you on the last man standing. You mean uh, you mean who's still standing? Uh, the Bailinator. That's right. When I was in high school, I would do impressions of Arnold. I never would do them now as a comic. So a lot of people, I guess a lot of comedians do, but I really did have fun doing it in high school. I got good laughs with that. Uh, a friend of mine has a story. It's actually a secondhand story from a friend of his that he was at a golf tournament one time and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was there. And he went up and said, hey, Arnold, nice to be here. I just wanted to say hello. And, and Arnold was like, oh, hey, Mark, do you remember your first blowjob? And he was like, yeah. And he goes, how did it taste? <laughs> and he just like walked away and left him standing there like a dope. I might have told that story, which is not my story, or even the story of the guy who told it to me. Um, on the show before, but whatever. It's a funny story. So yeah, the home, the yard, this time of year, it's like, all right, we got to get on it because it's going to be like, before you know it, it's going to be, it's going to be overgrown. There's going to be weeds. You got to like get on top of stuff, you know? Laura Mizgin says, yep, need to plant the whiskey barrel flowers and get the garden veggie starters going. Yeah, there's all, we're like squirrels getting, preparing for the winter, except it's spring. We're getting ready for all that is to come. What we have to do here um, is get some grass. Because <laughs> we did this big, big old job where we like took out the septic or rather filled in the big hole in the ground, which I still have to like adjust in my mind to it not being there. It's still there in my head. I have to like, I have to somehow adjust that in my head. You know, when there's something that you can't see that you know is there for so long and then you still can't see it, but you know it's gone, you have to, it takes a while, I guess. But so we like re-leveled, we regraded and everything. We have like the full walkout basement now. It's not that much different, but it's, it's, it, it is, it's very different. Uh, but so we have gravel and then we have just dirt, which has been mud until now. We've had like some crazy windy days uh and we keep saying, yeah, well, at least it's drying everything out. It's a good thing about the windy days. It's. It dry, it's certainly dr very drying to the soil, which has been so muddy. Um, Death Structure says, Pablo Francisco is, was a good movie voice guy comedian. Saw him in Amsterdam. Yes, Pablo, he's the one who did the movie trailer voice so well. Uh, and he had Arnold's voice in there. And yeah, he's a very funny guy. Get down. Get down again. Very funny bit about that. Arnold had a similar joke with Van Damme. Then Van Damme said, one day I'll be a great movie director. And Arnold went like, one day, why not every day? And puffed his cigar and walked off. <laughs> Arnold, he's always got a good one-liner, even in real life. Doesn't he? Yeah, I think he does. Elizabeth Fahey says, ha ha, we also had to dig up a septic pain in the patooki. Yeah, right. That's where it gets you, the septic, right in the patooki. Kowalski says, slight breeze tonight, 40 miles per hour. That's a slight breeze off the river. What river? What? Hey, man, what river are you talking about? Sparky, Marta Weller, loves the dirt lawn. Although it's kind of funny. He's a little tiptoey on it. You know? Uh, yeah, he's a little careful at first, but he's running on it now. It's just different, you know? But he likes it, and he gets very dirty. We got to get the, some grass in there because, like, if it's even the slightest bit wet, he's just like, 
we have to clean him up. Emma has like a whole system of like dipping his paws in a little bowl of of warm water when he comes in because otherwise he just literally puts paw prints everywhere. Robbie Osborne, my family and I would have been dominant, dominant on Cash Cab. That's a big statement, Osborne. It's one thing to kick butt on a game show from your kitchen or your living room, but to be on the show and do it is a whole different animal. Uh, yes, Monorail 425, exactly. Get to the chopper! Let's just do these Arnold yells. Ah! They were fun. It was very fun. And I would get good laughs. Uh, let's hit the like. Oh, thank you, roller skater Texas girl. You've got a lot of names in one. Hit the likes, baby. The Niagara River, says Kowalski. 40 mile an hour winds blowing off the Niagara River. And I'm guessing they're not uh, a balmy 65 to 75 degrees. I'm guessing they're pretty freaking cold. Don Goller says, hey, Ben, I tried to give up watching this show for Lent, but I fucked it up. Well, I am so glad that you fucked it up, Don Goller. Good to have you here. Sparky thinks it's a sinkhole. No, he <laughs> sinkholes, by the way, one of the most terrifying things in the world is the is a, is a hole that you just open up in the earth and just keep opening. It's like, what? Uh, no, that should not happen. What's up, Rob Burley? What's up, Tim Silva? I don't know if I said hello to you guys already. I believe I did. LOL. We live in Maine, says, t- says Tim Silva. You'll know when your septic is acting up, the grass is so high, and you start to see animals coming out that you don't normally see in America. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, Kraken? What do, you, what do you have coming out up there? I don't know if I want to know. Arnold groans as well as lifting something heavy. Ah! Gah! Those movies, some of those movies are so awful and great. Get to the chopper is from, well, I mean, you guys know, but let's see. There it is. Monorail is, like, mentioning it before I even decided to go with it. I just want to see, like, character name, actor, and all that. 30 degrees. Yeah, that's a cold wind off the Niagara River. Uh Uh-oh, busted. Better have a drink. And I forgot last time to give you guys a little Ben. Little Ben. Little Ben doing the the drive-by dance. Cheers. Yes, everyone, have a drink. Yeah. Oh. Dutch. Deathstruction is all over it. Dutch. Predator. Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, which I remember for some strange reason from an interview with him means black plowman. Not sure why. Robbie, it's cold in Tennessee. Where in Tennessee are you? Tennessee. What pair to that? Nice little cabs and beers. I like that. Lance O gave up organized religion for Lent this year. Nice. Nice. A sinkhole is the earth yawning. I'm <laughs> oh, sleepy little earth. Happy little trees. Death structure and you're drinking Red Bull cactus fruit. Just Zilla has a viewer question. Let's take it. Uh, did you ever drink? Oh, you're in Murfreesboro. Did you ever drink in the cash cab? And I'm going to steal one of Judah Friedlander's bits for a second and say, nope, no liquids. No, never drank in the cash cab. I was always driving. You know what? I might have sat in back and had a beer once when somebody else was driving us back. Uh, but good question. No. One time we were when, during the season, we were shooting, and one of the guys working on the show was like, oh, I knew you liked Stella, so I brought you a couple of Stellas for the trailer. I'm like, I can't drink, I can't drink beers, man. He's like, why? I'm like, because I have to drive the cab. He's like, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, where have you been? No, never drank in the cash cab, never would. Murfreesboro, uh, you're pretty far south to be 33 degrees, man. Whew. Kowalski gave me five dollars. Booyah! Thank you, David. You should leave early for work more often. So you can hang around and give me tips. Blowing it up. Blowing it up. This is episode 40. Motherfucking two. Episode 42, the number 42. Today we'll be discussing the number 42. Because, as I said, this is episode... Episode number 42. Yes, Robbie Osborne, I know where... I mean, unless someone else was asking, I know exactly where Murfreesboro is. I had a cousin who used to live there. I've got some people that I know, relatives just a bit south of you in Columbia. Columbia, Tennessee. And if you ever go there, you should try to schedule it around Mule Day. Thanks, Monorail425, says the Road Rage incident is hilarious. It was not hilarious at the time. I was genuinely angry. Um, yeah, episode 42, I can hardly, hardly believe it. Fun facts about the number 42. These are from a different site, so who knows what they're going to be. They're going to be interesting, hopefully. In the original Alice in Wonderland, here we go. 42 facts about the number 42. I, I reserve the right to throw some of them away if I think they suck. In the original Alice in Wonderland, there were 42 illustrations. Okay. 42 is an, is an episode of Doctor Who set in real time lasting 42 minutes. I think that's pretty interesting. Did you guys know that? There's an episode of Doctor Who. I never even knew what Doctor Who was. I know now, but like, they like came out with another version a few years back, and I was like, "What is this Doctor Who?" Everyone's all all hyped about it. I never knew what it were. There is an episode of Doctor Who that is called Forty Two, and it's set in real time, and it lasts forty two minutes. Robbie Osborne is graduating this semester with a bachelor's degree in information technology. Congratulations. Way to go, Robbie. We're going to blow this up for you. Da -da 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 -da. There are 42 U.S. gallons in a barrel of oil. Who knew that? Anybody? Will it ever do you any good? In the game of risk, there are 42 territories. Sounds risky. 42 is the atomic number of... Mali Bidenum, which is also the 42nd most abundant element. Mali Bidenum. Malibdenum. 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 42 degree degrees is the critical angle light must reflect at in order to create a rainbow. Huh. On the game show Jeopardy, you guys were just chatting about Jeopardy. I don't know why this is, uh, you bet, Robbie. Congrats, man. That's awesome. 42 degrees, blah, blah, blah. On the game show Jeopardy, Watson, the IBM supercomputer, has 42 threads in its avatar. Anybody know what the hell that means? At all, I do not. The Rise of Skywalker, the ninth and final Star Wars movie, was released in 2019, 42 years after the original film. Oh, you guys are jumping ahead. These must be shitty that you guys are jumping ahead. If you search the answer to... This is what you guys are already talking about this stuff before I've gotten to it. <laughs> If you search the answer to life, the universe, and everything on Google, Bing, or Yahoo, the result will be 42. Look at that. 3M stands for Minnesota Molly Bedenham Mining. Is that true? Why are there so many songs about rainbows, Lance O? And what's on the other side? That's what I'd like to know. Someday we'll find it, the Rainbow Connection. Who? Who will? The world's first printed book, the Gutenberg Bible, has 42 lines per page. Well, that seems like a reasonable amount. 
Yeah, 42 is a very low thread count. You're right. Molly Bendum. Those are some rough sheets. You guys are all over this. You're like ahead of me. It's fantastic. Uh, Buzz Lightyear's ship is named 42. Chuck Yeager first broke the sound barrier at 42,000 feet. Cell 42 at Alcatraz was home to Robert Stroud, who was transferred there in 1942. And after murdering a guard, he received 42 years of solitary confinement. Oh, my goodness. There's Emma Gleason chiming in and saying hello. She is uh, celebrating with Molly Bedenham because she loves numbers so much. Elvis Presley the King was 42 when he got abducted by aliens or when he died or whatever. <laughs> That's what it says here. Google's chief executive office is called Building 42. In the game of cricket, there are 42 laws. The three albums, Michael Jackson's Thriller, ACDC's Back in Black, and Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon all last 42 minutes. And my album lasts 42 minutes as well. How about that? Not comedy, my original songs album. Uh, this is, they are really reaching for some of these things. Uh, Jackie Robinson's number was 42. 42 is an even number, even backwards. Yes, imagine 42 years in solitary confinement. Long time. Dr. Seuss wrote 42 children's books. In New York City, 42nd Street is a main and very popular two-way thoroughfare. It's the avenue I'm taking you to. 40 seconds. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. In Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, the potion that Juliet takes will, uh, the effects of the potion will last 42 hours, which unfortunately is not long enough, or is a little too long. The ACS2 code 42 is for the asterisk symbol. Okay. Yeah, these are uh, these are a bit too too stretchy trying to get to 42 of them. Oh my, oh my. This oh here's an interesting one. This sentence contains exactly 42 letters. I don't know how many spaces. Don Goller, I like yours better than anyone on this list. In the year 42, Jesus would have been 42. <laughs> Good one. I like it. I like it. Uh, in one of the numbers in the television show Lost. No, is. 42 is one of the numbers. <laughs> okay, so let's see. 42 is the number of Fox Mulder's apartment in the television show The X-Files. Mm-hmm. Yep. 42 is the sum of the first six positive integers. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12. And here's the final uh, bizarre strange fact that I'm going to share with you today. Um, no, no, I've got two. I've got two. And I wish I had gotten to them earlier because I actually like them. Uh, 42 is the total number of dots on a pair of dice. And 42 gigahertz is the resonant frequency of human DNA. And that's it for numbers. If you were feeling a little bit too awake and perky, hopefully that little segment cured you of that and you'll be able to f sleep a nice deep sleep tonight. Thanks to our segment, Numbers. It's numbers, everybody. Uh-oh. It is a 420 tip from Mark G. Blowing it up. Whatever we do next, it's going to feel like we're going to warp speed after numbers. 42 is 10% of 420. Smoke them up. Smoke up, Johnny. Oh! That's what I said, Lance. Oh, human DNA has a frequency. Yes, it does, apparently. It's 42 gigahertz. Smoke up, Johnny. That's all you're getting. 
I'd like to see some guesses on the screen, please. Wah, wah, wah. 16 th thumbs up away from 42 likes for this show. <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's up, Jeff Watkins? I don't know if I said hello to you yet. 42 gigs sounds very high. Someone else thinks that it sounds low. Jeff Bailey. Hey, it's Jeff Bailey. Ben, I will see you in Des Moines, and thank you. Yeah, Jeff Bailey will be opening the shows in uh, Des Moines, Iowa in a few weeks. Excellent. Thanks for chiming in there, Jeff. You bet. You've earned it just by having a great last name. Ludicrous Speed. We should really call it Ludicrous Speed. You're right. You're absolutely right, David. David Kowalski. By the way, Jeff Bailey, uh, not of any relation to anyone, not just me. He's not related to anyone. No one. Crystal Noda, what up? Tim Silva just tipped me 20 bucks and I gotta blow it up again. That is big time, Tim Silva. Big time! I, sh I feel like I should uh, uh, encourage you guys to give me tips through Patreon or something instead because, uh, and I will still blow them up for you and announce them. But I realize that I don't really know where they go, and they just sort of get blended into the to the sort of nice Chris Montes or Montes John Bender the Breakfast Club smoke up Johnny, boom. That's what you get in my house for spilling paint in the garage. Um, yeah, like the analytics. If I look at the analytics of the of the YouTube channel, it's like here's how much money I have coming in, and then I do these shows, and you guys tip me like a fair amount, a generous amount, which I greatly appreciate, and it doesn't seem to change much. So either they're accumulating somewhere where I cannot find them, or they're just sort of blending in with the monthly the monthly money chris montes is it montes montes how do you say it bender bender what is this what are you doing oh i could quote that one all night haven't you heard thinking of going out thinking of trying out for a scholarship <laughs> such a great movie and just perfectly timed for me Marta Weller says, our uh, Patrick's Gotcha Day was the 17th. Patrick's Gotcha Day. I forgot. Like, I was writing a check to the town, by the way, because I finally have the permit to build the garage. Woohoo! COVID slowed that down, and it got slowed down with some uh, complications early on. So it's been about five years, but I have the permit. I'm going to build a garage in the backyard connected to the house. It's going to be connected. It's going to be nice. It's going to be fantastic. Venmo. Venmo. That's that's what we're talking about. Uh, and then I could I could keep it up on, on the screen here for the Venmo. Which one is it, babe? Did you... Uh... Is it the... I think it's Triple B Productions one, maybe, right? Anyway, uh, that might be, that might be better. Never play this again, says Monorail425. I do not know what it is that you are referring to. Da -da 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 -da. Do you ever get a song in your head and you that you didn't hear? I want to hear what I want to hear your thoughts on this, you guys. Do, first question: Do you guys have? Uh, a song that's stuck in your head like most of the time. I kind of always have a song that's in and out of my head. It's not always the same one, but I kind of generally have a song in my head, especially if I go and especially during golf. Like if I'm playing golf, I generally have a little song in my head. Uh, or, or not a little song, but, but a part of a song that's sort of playing over and over in my head. Lance O says, you are permitting permitting is my world we ha we are now permitted uh it's not that we're permitting it's that we we are permitted to build uh to build a garage in the back um 
Always. Crystal Notice says always. Yeah, there's always some song playing in my head, says Deathstruction. Yeah, me too. Electric Avenue? Kevin's Bacon Bits. I'm jealous. Good God, we gonna rock down to Electric Avenue. And then we'll take it higher. That is a great song. Eddie Grant. Working so hard like a soldier. Can't afford a thing on TV. Love that song. We're going to rock down to Fancy Pants, says Hey, Ben, Emma, and Fam. The first song that came to mind was Hey Now, You're a Rock Star. Uh Uh-oh, and that one will get in there, too. Get your game on. Go play. Galler, I love it. Raindrops keep falling on my head. But that doesn't mean my eyes will soon be turning red. Crying's not for me, cause I'm never gonna stop the rain by complaining. Let's go to the beach. Loving it, you guys. Nathaniel S. Sexton. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Welcome to the show. It's about time we go to the beach. Is that what you're saying? Fair enough. Great tune. Take me to the river, baby. Take me to the river. Dunk me in the water. In Bellingham, there is an electric avenue. Shit, Lance, oh, I was just in your neighborhood. I could have rocked, we could have rocked down to Electric Avenue. And you know what we would have done after that? We would have taken it higher. No choice. Only one way to go from there, my friend. And that is higher. Up. Take it up. Okay, we're back from the beach. Back from the back from the beach, y'all. That is a great song, uh, Talking Heads Town. Take me to the river. Drop me in the water. Love those guys. Big fan of those guys. Burning down the house. Man, that's a great song. That's one of those that I've like forgot about for a while, and then I just heard it at a party, and I was like, this is now a fantastic party, just because it has reintroduced me to whatchamacallit, burning down the house. There has got to be a way, burning down the house. Wait, hold on. What's somebody said about a reggae version? Dennis Brown does a good reggae version of what? Burning down the house, Don Goller? Electric Avenue is now in all of our heads. Yes, it sure is. And it's a good one. Sometimes, you know, if it's a song that you like, it's fine. Yeah, Emma says I'm going to have a mix of all these songs. I have had a, a Soundgarden song in my head, and it just keeps coming back. It just keeps coming back yeah con con good point die motherfucker die that's a good one to get stuck in your head you may find yourself living in a shotgun shack different talking heads but also a great song fancy pants check this i have a twin brother and i'll be singing a song from another room and my brother would be singing the same song as he's walking into the room okay I 100% believe that. And I some of you probably, uh, Emma Gleason at least knows what I'm thinking of already. There used to be twins, these twin girls that worked at Caroline's in New York, said they could read each other's minds. And I know, I, 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 like I said, I think I've shared this with you guys. Um, but I was like, bullshit. And they're like, no, really, we'll prove it. I said, and they said, you tell us. I said, okay, uh, I'm going to, one of you go out of the room and I'm going to whisper something in the other one's ear in the room. And then when you come back in, you tell me what I whispered to them. And they got it right like like a dozen times in a row. And it was mind boggling. Thank you, Nathaniel S. Sexton. Miss watching Cash Cab. I wish I missed making it. Just kidding. I, I had a great time making Cash Cab. So much work, though. Oh, my God, so much work. Kermit. 
Kermit does a good cover of what song, Lance? <laughs> Electric Avenue. <laughs> One time I had uh, I had bronchitis and I had this crazy fever, and I had White Stripes, Seven Nation Army, like fever dream, over and over in my head for days. I could not stop it, and I couldn't sleep. I was just waking up with it in my head. Um, the Soundgarden song is Like a Stone. In your house I long to be. It's a great song. Room by room. It's a little creepy. I long to be in your house, room by room, patiently. I'll wait for you there. Like a stone. That's a, that means for a long time and very, very patiently, I guess. Monorail 425. Nobody wants to be an NYC cab driver. No, I'd rather be a monorail captain. Things on a rail. You don't have to do anything. You just sit in the front and pretend you're driving. Tim Silva, viewer question. What was the hardest part about making cash cab? say the hardest part about making cash cab was making cash cab it was kind of a collective thing that made it so uh so hard the driving by itself is very hard the memorization of the questions and the proper pronunciation was hard the keeping the attention of the people in the cab uh being stuck in traffic and not playing the game while in the cab with people that I didn't know that wanted to ask me a million questions about the show. That was hard. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's you're right, Lanzo. It's not uh, Soundgarden. It's Audio Slave. And yes, uh, rest in peace, Chris Cornell. Amazing guy. Such a bummer. So sad. Um. Yeah, Audio Slave. My apologies. Uh, great song. Hardest thing about making cash cab was making cash cab. Let's do the news. The good news, that is. It's not just any old news. It's the good stuff. Roller Skater Texas Girl says, such a great show. This one or that one? <laughs> this is really, really good news for some people. Uh, and it's, it's really good news for people that have empathy. And for the people who have the condition. CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R, this is the good news. Gene editing reverses permanent vision loss in mice, offering hope for retinitis pigmentosa patients. Okay, so the hereditary condition, retinitis pigmentosa, is one of the most common causes of blindness affecting one in every 4,000 people in the world. That is a lot of people. Uh, and now researchers in China have used a genome editing technique to correct a mutation that leads to the condition in both mice and humans. Um, not only did the genetic connection lead to the mice regaining their sight, but the mice were shown to retain their sight well into old age. So this is, ama this is really a amazing, amazingly good news for someone, anyone who has uh, this condition, retina retinitis pigmentosa, there is reasonable, very, very reasonable hope of a cure. And people that suffer from this and are blind from it are going to be able to see, according to this study. And there's actually, this is an, uh, an, a slightly older bit of news. Uh, it has actually been tested with some su success uh, among human patients. Sorry, fancy pants, there's nothing in here about glaucoma. Uh, retinitis pigmentosa can be caused by mutations in more than 100 different genes. Symptoms begin with the dysfunction and death of dim light sensing rod cells before the disease spreads to cone cells 
which are required for color vision. Eventually, it leads to severe and irreversible damage and loss of vision. Uh, the study team from the Wuhan University of Science and Technology hoped this promising new method could soon be used to similarly restore vision in years to come. Now, since I, I brought this article up to share with you guys, I saw uh, a headline, which maybe I'll follow up next week, that it has actually successfully been tested on humans at this point. So, what's up, Paul Giacchino? It is good news. There's Kelf. What's up, Kelf on a shelf? Fahey hit me with $5. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, led by Professor Kai Yao, the team attempted to rescue the vision of mice with RP caused by mutations in the gene encoding a critical enzyme called PDE6, and that looks like an S-set by engineering, which is probably it's a beta, by engineering a new use, it's more likely a beta than a German letter, by engineering a new use for the CRISPR genome, genome editing tool when the system was programmed to target the harmful mutant gene, it was shown to be able to correct the mutation and restore the enzyme's activity in the retinas of the mice. So, three blind mice, not anymore. And that's today's good news. pretty enjoyable little uh, riff there. I thought it should be something pleasant for the good news, you know? You know what I mean? Not a big fan of Wuhan labs. <laughs> Artificial spines, you're waiting for those, Kelf? They're coming, I'm sure. I don't know when, but I'm sure they are. Let's go and take a look at... Uh, Upcoming shows, folks, because there's lots of them. Lots of them happening. And it looks like I've only got them on half of the screen for some reason. Uh, but this coming Thursday, I will be at the Candlelight Theater outside of Wilmington, Delaware. That show has been sold out for a very long time, unfortunately for any of you that might be wanting to go now. Uh, then I will be at the Funny Bone in Des Moines, Iowa, April 14th and 15th, I will be at the Riot Comedy Club in Houston, Texas, April 21st to 22nd. Sunday, April 23rd, I will be at, excuse me, the Parish Theater in Austin, Texas. I'm psyched to go back to Austin. I hope there are some Austin peeps out there that are going to come to this show. This is what I am hoping. Anybody from Austin in the his ass say, oh, yeah. All right, let's see if I can adjust this real time here. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'm trying, but I don't think I can. No, nope, it's not letting me. So we're just going to have to go half the screen here for the whole thing. Sorry, guys. Houston, Texas, 20, April 21st and 22nd. Austin, Texas, Sunday the 23rd. I'll be at the Wall Street Theater in Norwalk, Connecticut on April 29th. The Oaks Theater in Oakmont, Pennsylvania on Cinco de Mayo. Oh, yeah, the 5th of May celebration. The very next night I'll be in Reading, Pennsylvania at a place called Reverb. Two shows there. Please buy tickets and come to the shows, guys. That's how it makes all of this possible, all of it. Uh, I will then be at Blue Room Comedy Club on May 11th in Springfield, Missouri, which I think is a Thursday. Because then it will be that Friday and Saturday, May 12th and 13th, at the St. Louis Funny Bone Westport Plaza in St. Lou. Looking forward to seeing some of my peeps back there. Always have a good time with those dudes. After that, it's Crossroads uh, at Hawaiian Brian's in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, the, the United Theater in Westerly, Rhode Island on June 10th. My good friend Mr. Stephen Donovan will be opening for me on that show. I'll be a comedy at the Carlson in Rochester, New York, June 16th and 17th. Cobb's Comedy Club in San Francisco, June 30th and July 1st. Black Oak Casino in Tulumne or Tulum. 
don't know how you say that, on July 2nd. I'm looking forward to that. That looks like a really cool little place in the mountains there. I'll be at Prairie's Edge Casino in Granite Falls, Minnesota on September 14th. I'll be at Turtle Lake, Wisconsin at the St. Croix Casino on September 15th. Looking to, there's going to be another date in there for the 16th. And then the Sunday, I will be in Batavia, Illinois at the Comedy Vault. One night, two shows. Chicago people, that's as close as I'm going to get for a while, so come on out. I'll be at Coho's Music Hall in Coho's, New York, which is outside of Albany. That's on September 21st, despite the recent article that came out saying that it was on the 23rd. It is not. It is on the 21st. I'll be in Tacoma, Washington on September 29th. Portland, Oregon, September 30th. Eugene, Oregon, October 1st. Funny Bone in Liberty or Cincinnati, Ohio on October 5th. Louisville Comedy Club on October 6th and 7th. The Funny Bone Columbus, Ohio on the 8th. Uh, The Funny Bone Omaha, Nebraska on October 12th. I'll be at the District Event Center in Norfolk, Nebraska on October 13th and 14th. And then I will be at the Sellersville Theater in Sellersville, Pennsylvania on November 3rd. Mark G. blowing me up again. Whoops, turn that off and blow it up for them. So I don't know if you guys could tell, but I got a lot of gigs coming up, which I'm super excited about. Uh, Because, number one, it's going to be really fun. Number two, um, I'm going to make some money. I like to make some money. Yeah, Tacoma again, Lanzo. Maybe I'll see you. Maybe we'll rock down to Electric Avenue. Uh, hello, Elizabeth Fahey. I don't know when I'm doing Arizona. Nothing has popped up in Arizona as yet. But it will. But it will. In fact, I have a new person booking, doing bookings for me, which means I have a team of two out there that don't work together, but they're working together just for me. Uh, I'm going to tell them I want to come to Arizona in, like, January. Yeah, you heard me. January. Don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm thinking about it. Lanzo is Funny Bone a chain or a really common comedy venue name. It is a chain. Those are those are part of a chain. The Funny Bone. There's Funny Bones. There's Improvs. Uh, John Stamos is back. What up? Lots of Monday shows on here. Yes, exactly. You're right about that. I, I'm, I'm going to keep up as best I can. I, I will not stop doing this show, but I am going to be rather busy. Thank you, Elizabeth Fahey, for a $2 blow Arizona golf, baby. If I'm coming to Arizona, I'm probably going to play some golf, man. Golf man, which is my new agent's last name. Golf man. Stu Golf man. That's his name. He pronounces it golfman, but. I call him Stu Golf Man. Kara, I didn't forget about you. I have two different ones out there. Roller Skater Texas Girl and Stamos apparently have a history. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be uh, extremely, extremely busy. And that's good. I'm also going to have some time off. I will also have some time off. Yes, I will. Uh, I did not forget that there is the Shopify store that you guys can go to. If you go to my website here, you go to the top of the page, click on the Shopify store. If you haven't done it already, guys, hit up my social media platforms and follow me on those if you would. Please subscribe and like to everything that you possibly can. Uh, Then click here on the Shopify store if you want to go the extra mile for the show and for the people that share our strength and those that are beneficiaries of the charity share our strength. Make a purchase at the Ben Bailey Comedy Shopify store. There's all sorts of great stuff on here that are super fun things, which we're going to update very soon. And there's going to be my DVDs and different things on here as well, uh, which is going to be fantastic. 
Uh, but yeah, if you guys make a purchase on here, any one of these great items, money goes to share our strength, money comes to me, and a pound of plastics gets pulled out of the ocean. So do your part. Uh-oh, another tip. Who's this from? Uh-oh, that doesn't make sense. Mark G. Booyah, five dollars. Do not forget TPC Scottsdale. Okay, Cammy G, what's up? Howdy, howdy. Welcome back. We've seen you here before, but it has been some time. Lance O, hitting me with a movie quote. I want my two dollars. I want my two dollars. It is the paper boy, played by a little boy in the movie Better Off Dead. Kowalski says Helium, Helium Comedy Club. There's a chance. I think there's an offer from those guys, David, uh, for me to come up to Buffalo. Haven't done the Heliums in a while. Had a bit of an issue with them at one point. Uh, bah, bah, bah. What was I going to read there? Oh, Kevin's Bacon Bits used the Ben Bailey mug for tea the other morning. Excellent. Another movie quote. Would you like some tea? Not now, not ever. I know I've used it before, but do you remember what movie it's from? Oh, there's a message from Laura. For anyone who is new, I host a big new after show chat in Discord, and anyone is welcome to join. Thank you, Laura, for doing that and for inviting people. Ooh, a road rage. Hudson River Challenge hoodie. Not a bad idea. Yes, Kowalski, I'm planning on seeing you in Rochester, man. I like the guy that runs that club, and it's a fun club. I survived <laughs> the Hudson River Challenge. Oh, Kelf, I like that. You know, I do that bit on the road, and you know, I think people might buy those. Part horse body t-shirt still in the works. Found the picture. Emma found the picture. Thing is, we're switching over. We're going to have somebody else that's dealing with the merch so we can uh, incorporate things and I can bring stuff on the road with me. So that whole site's going to change. All the good stuff's going to stay. Um, and there will be some new stuff. Long sleeve live from Vix. Sorry, Don Goller. Yep. Hey, it's Sports Center. No, 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 no. With a $5 tip. Thanks. No, 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 no. I'm going to make a note here. Let me make a note. You know what? I don't have a pen. Let me make a note here. Part horse body and long sleeve live from Vix. Live from Vix. Join Laura's fun. It's fantastic, says Elizabeth Fahey. And there's the email. Emma has put up the email that you need to get in. And then you guys can all have a, a chat. <laughs> Kowalski undies uber comfy. Mark G's wearing David Kowalski's underwear. All right, guys, it is already almost 10 o'clock, and I've kind of uh, come to the conclusion that we're going to try to keep these to around an hour at this point. And it's going to be more than that anyway because we've got a little bit of reading to do, but it is time for this. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. For those of you who don't know what Sunday, Sunday, Sunday is, if you look at a calendar, uh, pretty much any calendar, well, I don't know. if you, if you Maybe you have to delve a little further into that to, to get to the holidays. But you will, if you do a little bit of digging, you will discover that today and every day is uh, several different bizarro holidays. And... We like to celebrate those because they're kind of ridiculous and they're kind of fun, and sometimes they're they're even a little more than that. So today is no exception. Today is several different holidays. The first one of which I thought I would share with you uh, is uh, is National Automatic Door Day. Yep, that's right, National Automatic Door Day. So now listen to this. This is the part that got me. The ancient Greeks didn't just give us the Olympics. They also gifted the world with automatic doors. 
At least that's what historians believe. According to historians, Greek mathematician and engineer Heron of Alexandria wrote about an automatic door-adjacent mechanism that was used to open up temple gates sometime around the 1st century A.D. Okay, so a long time ago. Like, if, if I had had to guess, thank you, Patricia Bradshaw. Five dollars. Boom! If you had said, how old do you think automatic doors are, I would have guessed, like, the 1960s. <laughs> or something. Uh, no. Turns out they're actually, uh, really, really old. First century A.D., according to descriptions in Heron's books named Pneumatica, the mechanism used heat from fires to build pressure in brass vessels. The pressure forced water from one container into an adjacent one, simultaneously tugging on attached ropes and pulleys to open up the temple doors to which this whole contraption was attached. That too... Just in time for prayers. Wah, wah, wah. Heron also apparently used this mechanism to open up city gates. How crazy is that? I can't believe that it was that long ago. And that and it's and when I did read that it was that long ago, I thought it was gonna be like a rope with a rock on it. And you just you push the rock off the thing and it cranks as it pulls down. No. A pressurized water transfer system that when the water is transferred, pulls the door open with it. Yeah, con con, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Goats pulling vines on bullies. No, this is like early hydraulics. Quite a while later in the 17th century, to be exact, Emperor Yang of Sui, S-U-I, constructed a foot sensor-activated automatic door in the Royal Library, according to historian Joseph Needham's book, science and civilization in China. It was only in the 20th century that the world got its first real automatic doors. Those other ones sound like they're pretty, pretty real automatic doors to me. Let's see here. This invention began with American engineers Horace Raymond and Sheldon Roby, who designed an automatic door in 1931. Even that goes back quite a while earlier than I might have thought. This device was later installed in Wilcox's Pier Restaurant in Connecticut and would open for waiters carrying plates of food and drink. How many Greeks were burned in the testing? <laughs> Probably a lot. Still, the world recognizes American engineers D. Horton and Lou Hewitt as the brains behind today's automatic doors. Their invention, created in 1954, much closer to what I was thinking, used sensors hidden inside mats on the floor to tell the doors someone was about to enter, and voila, the doors would open automatically. By 1960, this is the year that I actually stated, these doors had entered the commercial market and eventually became more and more common. Large banks, hotels, and various public buildings began using automatic doors. Innovation mocked the next few decades. Motion sensors were invented... Low energy doors came around. It was like really lazy, lackadaisical doors. Uh, access doors now took into account access for disabled people, and automatic doors went global. Automatic doors are everywhere around us now, opening and closing to safely permit or eject people from various buildings. I can't believe you guys are still chatting about Kowalski's underwear. 4,000 years of automatic doors, and you're fixated. This is crazy that this I'm talking about this automatic door situation because in the process of digging out the backyard and getting rid of the septic tank, uh, connecting to the town sewer, thanks for the buck 99, Elizabeth Bay. Part of the deal was we needed to move a fence and put the fence around along the side and across the driveway. Yes, Monorail. I agree. Better Off Dead was a great movie. Um, so then we have a gate that has to be opened in order to get the car in. And if it's raining, it sucks to have to get out and open a gate. So I decided 
I have a solution. I'll just hook up an automatic gate opener, uh, which I did. Jordy says, I need automatic doors in my house. Yeah, I think we all do. You just think about it, and the door opens. But so I, over the last few weeks, have been installing and fine-tuning an automatic gate opener. You have to push a button. There is a sensor that you could put in, but... Uh, this entire mountain is entire... <laughs> This whole mountain is made entirely of snow. I think I just froze the left side of my brain. <laughs> um, but so the gate thing has been pretty good. But we had like crazy winds one day last week, and then it it knocked it off. It like it didn't shut right, or it was very tricky to get the thing to line up and stay lined up enough that it will close and latch. Um. Uh-oh, Lanzo says, when I was little, an automatic swinging door buckled me. There was a lot of crying. It was one of my earliest memories. Those things stay with you, right? Oh, what's your earliest memory? I remember getting closed in an automatic door. It was fucking fantastic. Um, so we're celebrating National Automatic Door Day, everybody. And it was funny, for this one, there was like all down the page, there was like, here's what you can do to celebrate. You can go and find places that have automatic doors and use them. <laughs> I wonder if people are actually doing it, if anybody's actually doing it. <laughs> Kowalski says, that was a joke from working from home. I was suggesting that he have underwears with the big new tool. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Flat floor switches that triggered relays to electrically or pneumatically open doors. Yeah. Hey, what happened to the old man on the mountain? He died. <laughs> he was old as shit, and he drank too much, and he lived alone at the top of a mountain. He didn't make it. <laughs> he ran out of things to say. You crazy old man. Crazy old man. I always thought you shot out of a hidden cave like Batman. Who, me? I do. I didn't know anyone knew it, but I do. Yes, the tech guy has been missing in action. We haven't needed him. Knock on wood. Now Sparky's going to bark. Do you know what the street value of this mountain is? Nice. Nice, Chris Montes. Who's the actor? Did anyone get my last movie quote? I totally forgot. All right, next, uh, next holiday for today. National Backyard Day. falls on March 19th, and on this day we celebrate, embrace, and enjoy our backyards. Whether right behind your home or in a neighborhood park, what? Backyards are a place for relaxation, happiness, and freedom. If that's in the neighborhood park, that's not a that's not your backyard, man. I guess they want people that don't have a backyard to be able to celebrate as well, which is fine by me. So here's what you're supposed to do. Gardening, cookouts, scavenger hunts, camping, Taking a nap and homemade obstacle courses are just a few of the creative ways to celebrate National Backyard Day. You can also stay in and watch the Backyardigans. These green spaces provide solace and creativity that is much needed in today's busy paced, pace of life, it says, but busy, busy lives. National Backyard Day is marked its celebration of the special backyard memories we share with friends and family. All year round. Yes, Chris Monty's It Is Booger. But what's his name? What's the actor's name who plays Booger? When I was doing Star Search, I was out in Hollywood doing Star Search, and I was walking on the uh, from the soundstage to the exit, and I passed Booger, whose name I won't say until you know it. Lance O. his backyard today. Dude, you're celebrating. All you got to do is go to the mall, and you're all over it. Okay, and now here's the last one. Final final uh, bizarro holiday for the day. National Stretch Mark Day. You heard right. For some people, stretch marks can be a sign of shame and something to wrap and cover. But there's nothing to be ashamed of about stretch marks. This is why Anya Harris founded this day in 2019. Stretch marks are usually caused due to significant rapid weight gain. The science behind this is that our skin has only a certain level of 
stretchability. How about elasticity? Thanks to a protein called collagen or a lack of in our skin that keeps it healthy. This is all about celebrating. This is why I wanted to include this one. It doesn't have to be stretch marks. Celebrating, you know, you are what you are. You look like what you look like. You should be be able to feel good about that. And I am including myself because I am like a perfectionist. I want I want a I want a perfect body. I want a perfect soul. Um so yeah. Celebrate it. You are what you are. That doesn't mean don't try to improve or whatever, but you know. Curtis Armstrong. Only five hours more to, to get your stretch marks in. Hey, Jordy, what's up? Don Goller calls them curves. All right, everybody, let's do this. This weekend, one day only, it's National Backyard Day, so get out there and barbecue and have a scavenger and do some gardening. Make a homemade obstacle course and then take a nap. Now lay down and look at your stretch marks. Think about how fantastic they are and how nice they make you look. Now put an automatic door on your house because you're too lazy to open it yourself. Stretch marks the spot. Nice one, Con Con. All right, folks, that is it for tonight's episode. Episode number 42 of the Big New Show, which is not so big, and it is not so new, but it is terrific and fun. And I hope you guys had as good a time as I did. I hope you had as much fun watching and listening as I did doing it. And I hope you enjoy your post-show chat, your post-show Discord, I should say. Coolest thing about Discord, it's got disco in it, man. Uh, thanks so much, you guys. I hope you have a great week. Great time hanging out as usual. I will see you next Sunday. I will not see you. <laughs>